Welcome along to another video. I am That Cycling Chimp and in this one we're going to be talking a little bit about transporting cargo on your bike. I've been looking at pannier systems the last wee while and I managed to pick up one of these. Which is the Spider Rear Rack by a brand called Aero. A lot of you guys that's been watching my videos have commented asking for a review about this. So if you want to know a little bit more, grab a cuppa, kick back and relax and let's get the show on the road. Panniers, or as the French calls them, canniers. The word pannier actually derives from an old French word meaning bread basket. I've been looking at a lot of pannier systems and as I said at the beginning of the video, I managed to pick up one of these, which is the Spider Rear Rack by a brand called Aero. Now I have to say at this point in the video, I'm not affiliated, sponsored in any way whatsoever with the Aero brand. I picked this up with Moan Cash. And the reason I picked this one up is all the panniers I was looking at were kind of permanent ones fixed to the bike. I've only got one bike at the moment and I use it for absolutely everything. So I was looking for a system that I could take off, basically quick release. And there was other ones out there, but when I was doing a bit of research on the internet, this one kept coming up and I quite liked the look here. I also picked myself up one of these which is the 12 litre dry bag to go with the system, although I'm led to believe you can use any dry bag with it. What we'll do is we'll go down to the pain cave and I'll show you how easy it is to attach this to the bike. We'll also slam on the dry bag with some stuff in it and we'll do a little bit of a real world test. After that, we'll come back and I'll give you an actual review on what I think about it and some of the pros and the cons. So let's get down to the pain cave. Now that that's us down in the pain cave, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install the spider rear rack to your bike. It actually uses four little straps and these straps are controlled by four bolts. So the tools required for this are very simple. All you need is a five millimeter hex key or as we call them in the UK, an Allen key. I use this first just to get it into position and to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna use my torque wrench just to tighten it up and I'll probably tighten it up to the max capacity it'll go, which is four Newton meters. So let's get this thing onto the bike. First thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to release all the straps. You don't need to fully take the bolts out, you just loosen it until the straps come off. There's four straps in total. And as you can see in the mechanism there, it basically clips on to hold it all together. Now, one of the complaints that quite a lot of people were having with, I'm presuming it must have been the first generation of these, where the little rubber feet in the bottom kept falling out, but I've not had that issue so that's a bonus. You can also buy spares on their website. Now what I'm going to do is just attach it to the bike. So as I say, all you're doing is getting your strap and you're just hooking it on at the moment. It takes a little bit of manipulation the first time you do it. Now one of the issues I had at the beginning, I thought my stays at the back were a bit too narrow. There's actually 20 millimetres of play, so it will bend into position. I've also marked the back of my bike with clear tape. I had that on before for my mud guards which are quick release as well, but it's the exact same place that I've got to put this uh, rear rack. Now that's me into position, I just need to tighten everything all up. And this is also where my torque wrench comes in handy, but I need to put the extender on and I'll set this to four Newton meters. So now that's the system on. It took roughly about 10 minutes all in to get it on. Now I know some of you guys will be saying it takes less time to get a pannier system on. Yeah, I totally agree, but it's quick to get this off. I just think this is, this is a great piece of equipment and I'll get to the pros and cons, but now I'll put the little bag on. Now the one criticism I do have, because this is a new bag, it's quite stiff. I'm sure after some use, it'll get a lot softer. And this is the kind of awkward bit. There's actually two loops at the front there that these straps go through. But once you're in and clicked in, it's just a case of tightening and tidying up. There's a little kind of clip system that also clips onto the belt further up, just to make that more extra secure. Now, the one thing I will say, I've seen quite a lot of the adverts and quite a lot of other cyclists that have got this system that actually use like another strap round about the middle just to keep it in place. But I think that's near enough ready to go. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to get quickly changed and then we'll go out for a little road test just to see how it's like. Now that that's me changed into my cycling apparel, my little road test is going to be nipping to the supermarket just to pick up a couple of bits and bobs. I'm going to fill the bag up and then obviously come back home and see how we got on with it. Just before I go to the supermarket, I'm going to take the bike outside and I'm actually going to show you one or two of the variations you can actually have on the bike. So as I said, you can actually have a look and see how this is attached to the bike now. And it's actually just all strapped up. And it's pretty sturdy and secure. Now I've only got the one rack system, but potentially you could have three racks onto it on either side. You can actually move this little piece here and it can move up to the top so that it's more like a traditional uh, little bag at the back. Or you can have two either side and one at the top. There is a traditional pannier one that you can use pannier bags. But we'll go into that a little bit later in the video. So what we'll do is I'll nip to the supermarket, pick up a couple of things and see how we got on. Spring has finally sprung. They seem to be doing a lot of work down at Newton Shore as well which is quite good. So far with this rear rack, the biggest thing I have noticed is trying to lift the bike is a little bit heavier. I think the actual rack is roughly about another kilo onto the bike, but when you're actually riding, you don't feel any different. The bike's still pretty fast. I don't know what that'll be like when it's fully loaded. What I do want to do is what it's intended for, and it's actually for mountain bikes. So I'm going to do a little bit of gravel just now just to see what the difference is and to see if it still feels as secure as it does on the road. Pretty impressed with this so far. Even going across the gravel, you don't feel it kind of wobbling or bumping about. You don't actually notice it's there. One of the things I thought was going to happen was my foot was going to catch it all the time. But it hasn't done that, so that's a win. Always seems better when the sun's out. Okay, I've done 15 kilometers with this thing in the back of the bike, and I can see what the hype's all about. It's, it, you don't even know it's in the back of the bike. I'm going to see how long I can go before fatigue starts hitting in. Because I said, the bike's a little bit heavier because it's an extra kilo. But obviously with the moving, moving resistance, I'm not going to notice much difference there. Oh, did you get the did you... I've also got my D-lock in my back pocket, rather than my chain lock. Just because it's a little bit more compact. So we'll see how we got on. I'm going to head towards Irvine, and then probably cut across towards Kilmarnock. I've got a funny feeling this is going to turn into an epic. Well, that's me going to 20 kilometers, and I always stop at 20 kilometers if you watch my videos. And I finally managed to get some more graze bars. So I'm going to have a wee graze bar, and then we'll get moving on. I think today, obviously, because the weather looks absolutely brilliant conditions are absolutely immaculate. There's a slight breeze, but it's started to get a lot warmer since the sun has actually come out properly. So I think I want to head towards Irvine, cut across to Kilmarnock, then back to Ayr. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but we'll see how many kilometres we get out of this. I will say I'm still enjoying this spider rack that's on the back of the bike. It's definitely game changing in my eyes, honestly. Now I'm going to jump on the Cunningham path. It's a cycle track all the way to Comarnock, so 
let's do this. I've got a funny feeling this is going to be another metric half century today, another 50 kilometres. We'll just see how we go on. bit of headwind now but I don't care it's just good to get out it's definitely getting to that time of the year you can just tell with the change it's just starting to get warmer as the day goes on so I don't think it'll be long until some of the layers will be coming off the next couple of rides might even get a suntan in my legs for a change well I say that it's Scotland I'll probably have wind burn Well, I made it through Kilmarnock in one piece. The roads are pretty sketchy because it's all a one-way system. I've came to the other side of Kilmarnock and I'm just about to go through Caprington Estate, where Caprington Castle is. And we bring me back up towards the A77 and down towards Simonton. I'll probably go the old Kerrick Road on the way home. A bit strange with the weather because even though when I get into Kilmarnock it was pretty sunny, it's all of a sudden got pretty cloudy. Just having a little bit of harrow to keep the sugar levels up. I'm just about to go through the Carpentine estate as I said but this is where it might get a bit patchy because I'm not too sure where to go coming out and I've not actually got a route planned today. So we'll see how we go. I know which direction I'm going, I just hope I don't take a wrong turn. Now it is true that they say in Scotland there's a castle round about every corner. I don't really know much about Caprington Castle. I'll probably find out a little bit more and I might put it in the description. But if you know about Caprington Castle, feel free to comment below and let me know. As I said, at this point, I'm not too sure what turning I'm taking. I think I'm going this way, because I think that is to the gate that will take me around to Gatehead, I think. But I'm not too sure. We're going to try it anyway. As I said, I'm no rush to get home. And it, start <laughs> and it started out what was going to be a road test of a Pioneer system has now turned into an epic journey and we're sitting at 35 kilometres I reckon we probably will get the metric half century of 50 kilometres in today but I'm starting to get to the point I either need a cup of tea or a cup of coffee so hopefully not much longer and I'll get a little break back in the pain cave because it's starting to get a little bit windy and I'll let you know what I really think about this rear rack by Aero. Well, that's me get back to the pain cave. I've done 55 kilometres today, so that's an achievement in itself. It's the first ever long adventure I've not had a puncture in my back wheel. But literally, as I just get to the garden, my front wheel's flat, so I'm going to need to change that one before the next time I go out. Anyway, 
what do I think about this rear rack? I think it's absolutely brilliant. Honest to God, the pros for it are it's absolutely solid. You probably see me just there lifting the actual bike up with it as well. Um, I do like the bag on it. Uh, I think, yep, I can see why some people use an extra strap just to hold it, but it didn't really move or anything like that. So I'm really impressed with the system uh, as a whole. For me, I would probably, I would probably say I may get the pannier uh, kind of attachment for it, so I can run with like traditional panniers on it. Um, but I don't know. I'll see how I got on with this so far. Good thing is the tea bags that I bought in at Sainsbury's got home in one piece and have not been crushed. So that's pretty good too. Um, I think they're pretty much geared at people that can't really get a traditional pannier onto their bike, the likes of mountain bikers and some adventure bikes. Um, I would say I could probably run some kind of pannier system like the Ortlieb Quit Rack. I could probably run that on that because I have got mountain points, but I was looking for something a bit more versatile that I could just take on and off. So I would definitely say that's a pro. Some cons for it. It's quite an expensive system. I mean, the actual rack itself with one uh, kind of attachment for it is, I think it was 80, 80 pounds. Um, and then you've got your bag on top of that, which is quite expensive. If you've got your own dry bags or you can run with cheaper dry bags, absolutely brilliant. But I opted to get just a bag just to see how the system runs. Um, I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to send it back. Um, I'm hoping it's going to help me out in some of my adventures I've got planned for the summertime. But yeah, definitely, I would say anybody that's looking into this system, I would definitely recommend it for anybody thinking about going down that route. I do know they do a kind of wider version for fatter tyres, for those kind of like beach bikes. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say it's, it is a, a decent investment in my eyes. I'll let you know further down the line and I'll give you a little update how I'm getting on with it because I want to try the bag in different positions, maybe even up at the top. Um, the only issue I was having with the likes of the traditional kind of uh, bike packing bags that go into your saddle, I couldn't have that on and my radar. So I'm hoping I might be able to put the radar onto the back of this. Well, that's us got to the end of another video. I'd just like to thank you all for sticking around and watching today. Um, I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight into this system because I know some of you guys were asking uh, for a review of it and I hope I kind of satisfied what you were looking for. If you did enjoy today's video, give us a huge thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed it, consider subscribing and hitting that notification button because your subscribing keeps me and the channel riding. If you have any other questions on the system, feel free to comment below. If you use one yourself and you're quite impressed with it, let everybody know. As I said, I'm not endorsed or sponsored in any way whatsoever with Aero, but I will say I do like this product. I hope to see you all in the next one. But in the meantime, you can check out my last video here or you can check out archived videos below and previously on That Cycling Chimp. Until the next time, guys, bye for now.